This episode brought to you by Raycon, earbuds that look, feel, and sound better than ever. Also brought to you by EveryPlate, your perfect, affordable, and delicious meal kit. Gee, Tamara, what are you reading? Oh, nothing. <laughs> no, really, we insist. Oh, I was just reading my old diary of growing up in middle school. <laughs> well, I'm going over the lines of today's shoot. Oh, well, I know what I'm reading isn't as important. <laughs> You're right. Well, hold on, critic. There might be something in there that can connect to today's review. I guess we are doing diary of a wimpy kid. And I was voted most likely to wimp. All right, let's take a look. Oh, this is my best friend in the world, Billy, and I trying to fit in with the latest fashion trends. <laughs> oh, yep, uh, and here's a picture of us both being laughed at because the kids thought we were too dorky. Aww. And this is me shaming Billy for not changing who he was. Oh, it was the first time I saw a boy cry, but not the last. That's... Childhood? Oh, here is me throwing rocks at him because he didn't fix my insecurities. Is he tied to a tree? What else was I going to use my jump rope for? <laughs> Jumping? Oh, yeah. Oh, here's a picture of me framing him for eating the school hamster. Is that the police taking him away? Well, it wouldn't be the last time I made sure of that. Tamara, everything you're showing us is concerningly, disturbingly, alarmingly wrong. Come on, it's middle school. Everyone went through this in middle school. They did? Yeah. I made sure of it. You're trying to make this sound like a Christmas story. But it's Disney Channel's Henry portrait of a serial killer. Aw, you guys are just too soft. Much like Billy when I trained him to be a pinata. Where is Billy now? Oh, we're still best buds. We keep really close. Isn't that right, Billy? Not twice for yes. See? Is Billy on the floor? How else would we keep close? What the hell? Is that what your middle school life was like? No, but I'm sure that's what Jigsaw's middle school life was like! What are we gonna do? Well, first we gotta dig a hole to get this Billy guy out. That makes sense. But I can't believe I live in a world where that makes sense. Two, we gotta alert the authorities. After I do the review, of course, this ties in too perfectly. Of course, nobody would blame you. Just watch her like we should have been watching the person living under our floors. Do you really think she ate that hamster critic? I don't know. Malcolm, I don't know. What you talking about? Oh, about how not crazy you are. Oh, I love those conversations. They happen a lot? No. Okay. I'm sure this made a fine book series, but man, it made an awkward movie. <laughs> While I didn't grow up with the Diary of a Wimpy Kid books, it became such a phenomenon that I couldn't escape at least knowing what it was. Beginning as an online diary in 2004 by Jeff Kinney, audiences immediately fell in love with the stories and drawings and demanded it in print form. They've since become the sixth best-selling book series of all time. As someone who hasn't read it, I can see why this telling of a naive kid trying to fit in by any means necessary could work in this format. As a 2010 film, though, I get the feeling something was lost in translation. This is a bizarrely mean, dumb, and not very funny telling of a supposed sympathetic middle schooler who's so unlikable, I'm kind of rooting for the bullies to beat him up. Now, we've seen selfish kids in movies and shows done well before, both in humorous ways and relatable ways that make us identify with them even when they do something stupid or mean-spirited. 
this character in this world does not know how to do that in the same way. If it had a smarter sense of humor or more honest and genuine storytelling, maybe it could have worked. But as is, it's pretty lame and even uncomfortable. I ended up hating this little snot and the fact that he had no identity outside of wanting to be liked. It's not like he was a certain way in middle school is challenging that. He just wants to fit in and there's nothing else to him. So fittingly, that's how I saw this movie. It wants to fit in with all these other coming of age comedies, but doesn't because it has no unique voice. I guess people saw it though because they made several sequels and shows, but whenever I look up reviews, it doesn't seem like it won over everybody. So I'm gonna dish why it didn't win me over either. This is probably gonna get me in trouble with a diehard fan base, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. It opens with our main character, Greg, played by Zachary Gordon, being told he's about to be late for his first day of middle school. We get the shtick of him rushing his morning routine that, I know it's hypocritical me saying this, but is probably trying too hard. But it looks like it's a prank as it's a beautiful screensaver night outside. We get the iconic drawings where he looks like a more cancerous Charlie Brown and our opening narration begins. Let me get something straight. This is a journal, not a diary. So you're already lying to us. It's like the opening of Superman when he said, I'm really more of a meh man. So right off the bat, this character's setup is that he wants attention. Okay, that's fine, a lot of kids are like that, but for what? Just being. I always figured they'd make a movie about my life. That's our boy up there. Why did I ever say no to him? When I'm rich and famous, I'll have better things to do than answer people's stupid questions all day long. He doesn't have any interests or hobbies. The one thing they say later is he likes drawing, which, yeah, you think that goes without saying, but they almost never show him drawing or even talking about it. And let's be honest, even his drawings are pretty lame. The style works in a book because it's a purposefully bad visual, making it even funnier when he tries to explain something and you have to use your imagination to help. But here, you're shown how everything happened. So even this one supposed hobby he has that we never see is still pointless. It's only done because people remember it from the book. If he was like Calvin and drew people as monsters or something, that'd give a unique outlook, but it's just stick figures talking. So yeah, there's nothing much to this character. He just wants to grow up and be rewarded for doing nothing. He'll be either an influencer or worse yet, a YouTuber. Were you always so smart and handsome? Here's my journal. Now, shoo, shoo. With that said, his friend in live action Martin Prince Rowley, played by Robert Karen, is easily the best character in the movie. Josh, he says, respect your parents and follow your dreams. My mom doesn't let me play with makeup anymore. Do you have my back? I will always have your back, Captain. For such a throwaway role, this actor makes the most of it. He's supposed to just be the dumb, happy, fat friend, really nothing else. But I'll be damned if he doesn't give a million percent at playing the dumbest and happiest of this trope I've ever seen. Can you say Zooey Mama? We could try for cutest friends. Jazz dancing. I wanted to be matchers. Zooey Mama. <laughs> Cute butt. It was a present from my mom. Yes. I like Zooey Mama. Everyone knows me now. It's like I'm famous. I just started drawing a bunch of Zooey Mamas and I felt better. There's no kid for me to sleep over tonight. Awesome. Shit, this kid really jacks you up. Oh, by the way, here's a clip count I never thought I'd see on this show. Awkward boy on toilet scenes. There's uncomfortably a lot of those in this. Ew. It's your fault he's still potty training. The potty monster doesn't like it when you look at him. Ew. Jesus, I couldn't even make a joke before the next one. What is wrong with you, movie? He brags about how ugly all the kids got over the summer while he, quote, thankfully stayed the same. That's a little funny. But I don't know. I don't think they directed this kid well to give him a likable performance. I get what they're going for, and this dude has turned in plenty of good roles but I think he was told to be too snobbish and too up his own ass. Gross and undignified that I'd eat breakfast next to him. If you're not gonna listen to me, just tell me. It's better than being seen with that great joke. Should be at the top of the food chain by now. You can't recover from social suicide. I was about to make some kid's day by sitting next to him. Give him a bow tie and I totally buy him as a young Tucker. Even down to he doesn't like Spanish. Hola, amigo. Donde esta la biblioteca? I feel bonito, oh so bonito. P.E. is as much a part of my life as waking up in the morning and going to the bathroom. No, trust me, you don't need to count that. There's sadly plenty more. He puts all the tall kids against all the short kids because, I don't know, everyone's just an asshole in this movie. Where they discover the 90s token girl in a 2010 movie, Angie, played by Chloe Grace Moretz. 
It all starts in middle school, you know. You're not a kid anymore, the coddling has stopped. Kids are now separated by intelligence. So, okay, you look at the long intro they give this kid and you think you get the general idea. She's gonna be kind of an outcast too, a bit of a tomboy, get in trouble with them, maybe a blooming romance, the usual stuff you expect with a character intro like this. But no, she's almost totally gone for the rest of the movie! She takes pictures for the yearbook every once in a while, and that's it! Why'd you spend so much time setting her up? That's like introducing Hermione and then putting her as the school mascot. It doesn't make sense! I'm Angie. Great story. We're gonna go now. Why? This is a good spot. Damn it! I was about to score. We are introduced to maybe the cleverest part of the movie, a piece of moldy cheese that's been on the playground so long, it has its own origin story. Didn't touch the cheese! Didn't have the cheese touch! I feel like every school has something that's neglected and only gets worse over time, to a point where kids tell stories where if you touch it, you're infected until you pass it on to someone else. It's honestly kind of a fun setup. It was madness! Ew. 9 and 15 minutes in and we're up to 3. This is a terrible place. After that kid from Phineas and Ferb tells the story, we cut to... Ew. Well, at least I got one joke in between these two back to back. I do really like this joke where Greg imagines one of the bullies picking on him being his servant in 20 years. I really need my measly pathetic job scooping your dog's poop. Whatever, I'll think about it. Like he would ever grow up to look like that. Here's my number. Oh, I just had it ready to go. Greg's brother, Roderick, played by Devin Bostic, spends most of his time torturing his brother and playing in the band Loaded Diaper. Okay, these two get made fun of, but he gets a pass with a band name that sounds like a Boss Baby sequel? If he catches you in here, he will kill you. They try to find something to get back at him with, but all they discover is the softest of dirty magazines and his old yearbook. There's tons of things I qualify for. Class clown. Don't you have to be funny for that? Hey, you said that one movie, not me. Also, I know this movie wants to make the brother intimidating, but he does have the makings of a Tinder killer, right? I'll wait here as long as it takes, and then you're dead. He protects himself to try and sneak past his brother to pee and... Ew. Okay, did this guy direct this movie? Eight year old, dude. But his brother was hiding and he pisses on him. <laughs> I mean, there's technically no toilet, but I think it's the same ballpark. We find Greg has a bully who's a tall girl named Patty. And before you feel too bad for him, let's see why she picks on him. Patty, Patty is a fatty, has a face just like a ratty. Come on, that was pretty funny. Remember when Ant-Man shrunk down so small, he basically went into another universe? He couldn't find the tiniest thing to like about this kid. He decides to sign up for wrestling, but keeps getting beaten by the weirdest kid in the school, Freakly. I'll take it easy on you. Get off me! Seriously, this film plays like the first boring 10 minutes of a superhero story, but the powers never happen, so you're just stuck with the lame stuff. Oh, did I mention yet this kid also likes to play a game where he just hits Rowley with a football? Can I throw at you now? You're better at riding than I am, and I'm a better thrower. Is there a story to this movie, or is it just a buffet of regret? The funny thing is, I usually like it when a film like this has no story. It feels more like an exaggerated slice of life. But there's usually some focus, like trying to get a BB gun or trying to get a baseball back from a dog. This is just a boy battling his shallow emptiness. And it's not cynical or funny enough to be clever. You signed up for wrestling? Greg's dad, played by Steve Zahn, thinks it's great he signed up for wrestling though. He's another guy I don't think the movie figured out as a character, so they just have him say random stuff in random ways. Well, Greg, I think it's great that you took the initiative to learn something new. What is that smell? I can't even identify it. I think you should go. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Maybe the joke is he was a small sponge version of Michael J. Fox, and now that he's been put in water and grown bigger, he doesn't have a personality. Meet your new opponent. He gets teamed up with Patty, resulting in the one line in the movie I actually find believable. Her parents threatened to sue, so you show her what it's like to wrestle a real live boy. With this movie's writing, I'm just happy there's not a line that says, there's nothing in the rule book that says a dog can't wrestle. And as you guess, she kicks his ass and is made a fool of in the school paper. Not that he needed help. I heard some in the hallway say that Bryce Anderson has a cute butt. A butt can't be cute, it's a butt. What is happening in this film? 
Seriously, I feel like half the lines in this could be followed by Basil Fawlty saying, Why don't you talk properly? <laughs> so how are you gonna become a class favorite now? Two words. Best dressed. Yeah, literally, no one is surprised he models himself after Al Capone. So what do boys wear when they want to look cool? Let well, their moms dress them in for picture day. Has anyone who made this movie ever kid before? Ta-da! But oh no, Rowley wore the same thing. Clearly this idiotic idea was his fault. Maybe Roderick was right about Rowley. Maybe I do need a new best friend. No, you need to read this. Have you been injured in an injury? That sucks. You need Raycons. It can't help you legally, but you'll be listening to nice music, and that's nice. Take me, for example. Lately, I've been listening to Sunny Side Up Summer from the Bob's Burgers movie. It's weird, the movie came out months ago, and I heard the song, I'm like, oh, that's nice, but then, like, three months later, it suddenly popped back in my head, now I can't get out of my head. It's weird, and, like, everybody I talk to, the same thing happens. It, it, it's weird, I've never had that happen with a song, but it can happen to you, maybe, I don't know. Raycons. One of the reasons it's been so great to listen to is because I use my Raycon wireless earbuds to do it. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable and they will not budge. Trust me. Raycon gives you 8 hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery time. Raycons are priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price of the other premium audio brands. It's no wonder Raycon's everyday earbuds have over 50,000 five-star reviews. I personally love the customizable sound profiles and noise isolation. So wherever I'm listening to Sunny Side Up Summer, I'm listening the best most focused is on it. Did that make sense? I don't care. The song is literally playing in my head right now. Sunny Side Up. And now you can get a special deal. Go to buyraycon.com slash nostalgia today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash nostalgia to score 15% off. Remember, that's buyraycon.com slash nostalgia. But let's get serious for a moment. Has someone of legal authority wronged you? You're probably hungry. Get every plate. As summer winds down and your schedule gets busy, set yourself up for success with the ultimate time and money-saving hack, every plate. At first I thought meal kits had to be expensive, but I was wrong. Call this number. Don't do that, because it turns out every plate is 25% cheaper than grocery shopping. Every plate's quality ingredients come pre-portioned to help you save money and reduce food waste. You know, like that bag of spinach you throw out every week. Are you spinach? Do you need a representative? Call this number. Just the spinach, though. Because legally I can't get in trouble for that, because spinach cannot call numbers. So, I'm not a very good lawyer for spinach. What am I talking about? At first I was skeptical, because I will admit I'm not a very good cook, especially with spinach. I hurt its feelings too much. But regardless, with their easy-to-follow menus, I can cook easily and deliciously. I don't know if you can cook deliciously. I found a way. Every plate is that good. It's also amazing just how much money I saved. I can't express more that every plate is worth every penny. Here's a special offer. I don't know, I was tired of closing the book. Get your first box for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering the code NOSTALGIA149. Get started with EveryPlate for just $1.49 per meal on your first box by going to everyplate.com and entering code NOSTALGIA149. My picture book says it's up to $110 value. Seriously, there's a page in there, it says that. No, go to everyplate.com and enter the code NOSTALGIA149 to get your special offer today. Trust me, I am a man in front of a bookshelf and text that says, trust me. Doug returns to playing Kingdom Hearts in Birth by Sleep every Friday on Twitch. We also have new content six days a week. Hope to see you there. Funny 80s film strip that's not only low budget, but the actors are clearly older than middle school. <laughs> Greg realizes he's fine the way he is. It's his best friend who needs to change. Okay, don't you dare ruin clearly the best character in the movie because this kid is still hilarious. Josh, he's not cool. He's a lip syncing pop star whose fans are eight year old girls. You're just jealous that I was the one who discovered him. What the hell is he even wearing on Halloween? He must be the only kid in history to dress up as King Wart from Mario 2. <laughs> but his brother tells him the story about ghost cannibals who ate children. They put the kids in these giant pizza ovens, and they cooked them, and they ate them. So does every member of Loaded Diaper look like Nathan Fielder shot with a makeup gun? Oh, what's the father doing again? In case someone tries to TP us, they're gonna get drenched. Gotcha! Oh, 
He's kind of a name, so we're giving him kind of a part. Some bullies spray him with a milk fire hose. That old gag. But when Greg threatens them, they turn around and try to get him. Where are we going? We're totally exposed! No, that's like half the other actors in the movie. They hide in Rally's grandma's house, who seems to be out. I'm gonna kick your butts! That was an unnatural way to say that. Almost as unnatural as playing Go Fish while waiting for them to come out. You have any threes? Go Fish. Every kid in this is like one of those phony actors from that film strip earlier. Which was ironically making fun of people who don't know how kids act. Are you kidding me? I'm gonna rip off your arms and punch you in the face with your own fists! You are a malfunctioning Scott Fargus. They're chased into the woods where his brother said all the killings happen and they hear creepy laughter. <laughs> but it was just that Freakly kid. That's a, that's a satisfying payoff. Guys? What the hell is he supposed to be, a horny sperm? Can't have one great payoff without another. I'm sorry, I thought you were teenagers. <laughs> Maybe next year, Pop. Hey! You know, a movie like this should really be a minefield of charm. Like, there's so many likable moments that should be exploding. How are you missing every single mine? His next plan to be seen as cool? Signing up for Safety Patrol. Safety Patrol. The cops in middle school. Did something change since I've been to middle school? Does everyone think the kids from Barney are badass rebels now? Just remember, with great power comes great responsibility. I got that from Catwoman. Ah, eh, look at that. Angie's going for a new look in her story that's not in this. Safety Patrol is the lowest of the low. The geekiest of the geeky, the island of misfit toys. Guess now that she's a photographer, she has to be Vicky Vale? She at least lets him know it's a geeky position to be in, and also he should really turn down the contrast on his house that's looking green screened. But big surprise, Rowley gets hurt in their game of Let's Hurt Rowley. This makes him an instant chick magnet, but don't worry, Greg forgives him for having his arm broken by him. I decided to go ahead and forgive Rowley for milking the broken hand so hard. You're gonna end up as either a crime boss or president. Either way, people are gonna want to see you in jail. He asked Rally for help on a cartoon contest, but he immediately kicks him out for his bad ideas. Guess what wins his bad ideas? That is funny! <laughs> Good job. That, that's too weak. What, and cartoonists get standing ovations? Where was this shit when I was growing up? But just when you thought this character couldn't get any worse, he puts a bunch of kids he was supposed to take home in a ditch, pretends to be Rowley, abandons them, and then lets his best friend take the fall. You are officially suspended from safety patrol, and I expect a full apology to the kindergartners. Oh, you mean the ones that would say he's not the one that took us? I know this is a children's movie, but if children get punished for handing in deemed material, adults should too! I'm the one who terrorized those kids. What? You should be more careful who you lend your coat to. He eventually lets Rowley know it was him that did it. Still trying to pass him off with part of the blame. And by God, this kid is doing everything in his power to save this movie. You know what, Greg? You're not a good friend. Jesus, I love the shit out of this character. That was the what? No, if it was done correctly. He's like the anti-Cartman. He's just so positive that when he figures out his best friend is a jerk, he acts like he didn't want to believe the rumor that mean people could be a thing. Don't call me. Don't come by my house. Seriously, man, you and me, we're fucking done professionally. He gets a new best friend and even returns to safety patrol because one of the kids revealed what really happened. Yes, Greg still didn't come forward, leaving him to become friends with the braces girl from Finding Nemo. Greg Huffley, I love you! We're going to be best friends forever. I'll admit the randomness of this kid can be a little funny too. Like his weird wall decor, the fact that he has Twister on the floor despite never having anyone to play with. He's just beating up a kite when Greg asks him for a sleepover. Yet somehow, I still see Greg as most likely to mount human heads. As you'd guess, he's freaked out by Freakly. So he tries yet another attempt to be popular. Jesus, I wish this was a sitcom so he just learned the dumb lesson in a half hour. By trying out for the school play. He finds he actually has a great voice, but the teacher wants to cast him as Dorothy. When he asks for a male role, she says his voice is too high and casts him as a tree. Your voice is too high for any of the other male roles. Perhaps you can be a tree. I guess she was counting on every boy's voice already to be cracked at the audition. When he sees his brother recording him as a tree, though, he cracks and gets in a fight with Patty, who's playing Dorothy. 
Make me come over there and beat you up again! <laughs> it's official. I would rather this movie be about any of these kids except the one it's about. Wrestling Girl would be kind of cool, that half-rendered CG kid would be funny. And by Christ, I am feeling Rowley's absence in the movie right now! Can't they just make up already? No, first he has to get revenge on Roderick by making it look like the younger brother got into his dirty magazine. Do you have anything you want to say to women? I'm sorry, women. <laughs> well, if it got Scott the Waz's approval, I'm sold. We next go to a mother-son dance because, I don't know, just random things are happening now. I take it back now, random things are happening. <laughs> Remember when the toilet stuff was the eeriest part? <laughs> so... That happened. But the next day, the bullies from Halloween stumble across our two leads and still want revenge. As you'd imagine, they find the cheese and force Rowley to eat it. Now eat it. So, okay, you know what's gonna happen. Greg's gonna insist to eat the cheese to get Rowley off the hook. Nope, Rowley eats half of it. Oh, okay, well, Greg's gonna eat the other half so they'll go through it together. Nope, he saved. Um, he's gonna eat it in front of everyone to share the pain with his best friend? Nope, he just says he ate it and not Rowley. Even though the movie made it clear there's no lower he can go on the totem pole. So, yeah, he sacrifices nothing. He saves Rowley's reputation, but Greg wanted his friendship back anyway. It feels like Rowley is still the only one who suffers. You want to come over after school and play? Okay. Though I guess you could say he'd suffer worse if the kids found out the truth. Remember, he's friends with Greg again, and Jesus knows that's going to bring a whole lot of suffering back into his life. So, the year turned out pretty good. Oh, yeah, I forgot this shot was a thing. My goal was to be a class favorite, and I made it. Zooey mama! And that's the way the news goes. Yeah, catchphrase. I'm sure all the kids said it. I don't know, this movie was bad. Like I said before, I can see it working as a book series. Even though I never read it, I can see the potential of a story like this being for kids with a little bit of a mean-spirited edge. But the meanness isn't fun here. It's just stupid, unfocused, and doesn't have much of an identity. Outside of the line drawings, there's no real style to this film. Maybe because there's no real center to the main character. In the end, what's he all about? I don't know, he's just a douche. Once in a while there's a good joke or a funny performance from the other kids, but the way the lead is written and directed doesn't carry any joy. He's just too dumb and unlikable. Maybe one day I'll take a look at this book series and see why it won over so many people, but seeing this movie is not putting me in any rush to check it out. I'm a nostalgia critic, guy. remember it so you don't have to. Hey Malcolm, get that thing with Tamara figured out? Uh. Do you really think she ate that hamster critic? That's <laughs> 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 funny. We're continuing cameos for charity, and all this month, we're donating to Living Beyond Breast Cancer. Living Beyond Breast Cancer is fulfilling its mission to provide trusted information and a community of support to those impacted by the disease. They offer in-person experiences and on-demand emotional, practical, and evidence-based content that is meaningful to those newly diagnosed, in treatment, post-treatment, and living with metastatic disease. Having done this for over 30 years and having a four-star rating on Charity Navigator, this is definitely a great one to support. So if you want a cameo from me saying happy birthday or congrats or whatever, click on the link below and be giving to a good cause. Or if you're like, I hate your face, I don't want a cameo from you, still consider looking at this charity anyway. Whether you donate, volunteer, or just spread the word, you can do a lot in helping this wonderful organization out. So click on the link and give it a look. Thanks so much.